the best interaction is real. It's much more difficult when you kind of your eye gets to compare the physics of the real world. A lot of times it just doesn't feel as good as it looks when you're filming it with the camera practically. Well in Aftermath we have our main shuttle crash and we could have done it uh, you know a number of ways. We could have gone full CG with the entire sequence. You know it would have freed up the cameras a little bit more but it would have been uh, tough thing to take on. We've been looking for an opportunity to shoot models on Universe for a while and Robert Cooper who wrote the episode, you know, he wrote a, you know, a lengthy sequence for the shuttle crash. You know, when you when you have a space shot of spaceships flying around that's entirely uh, CG, uh, that is that is something that where there's nothing real to compare it to. So there's no you know, reference that makes your eye go, oh, that doesn't look real, so the whole thing is a little more easily accepted. When you combine real life elements with CG, that's when you start to get into the discrepancies. You know, you have to represent lighting and interaction of, of real objects with the CG, and they have a much harder time, I think, and if you can use models uh, to create that, at least elements, then it's gonna give you a better looking shot in the end. It's gonna create something that just feels more real. When a model hits the ground, hits trees, hits the side of a mountain, it, it's one place where CG kind of falls a little bit short because you know, you're shooting something practically and it really shows up well on camera. In this case, we don't, uh, we don't actually build a fully detailed shuttle. It would have been great, but it was far too expensive. We had the model shop here build a four-foot model of the shuttle, and that was taken from actual CG files. And we had four basic setups that we were gonna do. We were gonna do the shuttle attached to a parallelogram and basically slammed into the ground. It's just a little one. We're just pushing up a little bit of sand and dust up in the air help create the impact of the spaceship into the dirt. We had the shuttle running along the ground, which was on the parallelogram as well. The shuttle through the trees, where the shuttle was on a rig attached to a skate, and then dragged through the trees themselves. And then the shuttle hitting the cliff, where once again it was on the skate, and it hit kind of the side of a three-foot mountain that was created by the special effects guys. We have a uh, beautiful fluorescent bubblegum flavored shuttle. It was painted uh, digital red because we had the trees which are green and then a blue screen behind to create the, the sky in the background. The red is keyed out so you can place anything in there. And what is done is a skin basically of the shuttle and its textures and everything else is placed over top of the red practical model. And then that's composited in. And so you get, you know, a nice look behind the exploding sand, the exploding trees and everything else. And you get to keep your, your actual CG model in there. You know, I think that if we had tried uh, to, to do it entirely in CG, it, it would have cost as much and, and probably not been as successful. And I think it looks so much better than it could when, if it was created all in CG. Like, I think it was the, you know, for sure the right thing to do and the right approach to take.